Welcome to God, Sex, and You, a daily discipleship podcast on healthy sexuality. Here's your host, Purity Pastor, Dustin Daniels. We continue our study in Proverbs 5 today. Yesterday, we heard the tone of a loving father, and he was saying, don't do this. Don't don't engage with the immoral woman. If you do this, if you engage with her, you're only going to hurt yourself. And today we start in verse 9, and and we see how the Lord becomes prophetic. He becomes very specific in what will happen in and to our lives when we choose to act out in sexual sin. It's out of love that God tells us what happens. If, If we choose not to run from it, this is what's going to happen. Unfortunately, let me just say that I was the fool that the Lord is talking about in these verses. And that's the whole reason that this podcast exists, is to share my story so you don't have to go through the pain and the foolishness that I went through. So we're going to be looking at Proverbs chapter 5, verses 9 through 14, if you wanted to follow along in your own Bible. Uh, In today's podcast, we're going to discuss several things. Number one, what exactly are you living for? And and what do you want to be remembered for? Number two, how do you build spiritual muscle when it comes to sexual integrity? And number three, how do you receive spiritual blessings within sexuality? Verse nine, you're going to give your honor to others and your years to the merciless. All of your influence, all of your good standing in the community is going to be given to a person who is ready to inflict pain upon you. Verse 10, lest strangers take their fill of your strength and your labors go to the house of a foreigner. Guys, these strangers are enemies. They're going to satisfy themselves because of your work. All the early mornings, All the late nights, all the pain and the blood and the toil that you are working for, someone else is going to enjoy the fruits of that labor. Someone who doesn't belong in your house, let alone in your bed or on your computer, someone is going to take those things away. Verse 11, and at the end of your life, you're going to groan. When your flesh and your body are consumed, at the end of your life, you lived your whole life for what? To get laid? That that word groan there, it literally means that we're growling in pain. That, That we can't even speak at this point in our lives because the pain is so great. Why? Because our body is completely consumed, it's devoured by sin. And then when you do have enough effort and energy to speak, this is what you're going to say. Verse 12, how I hated discipline and my heart despised reproof. That just means that you were unwilling, son. You were unwilling to be disciplined. See, discipline is this this idea of instruction on how something is done. There is a way to live this life, and it's God's way. Discipline is is training to build spiritual muscle. But those of us just consumed with sexual sin, we just want to suck our spiritual thumb on this. See, we, we reject any type of criticism, and we judge you for judging me. I used to think I was just so above discipline. I would never get caught, and there would never be any kind of consequences. There's lots of consequences. There's a point in my life to where all I, could, I was so consumed with sex, I was either going to have, continue looking at pornography, masturbating, have sex with somebody who wasn't mine, or I was going to shoot myself. That's where this proverb leads. Sex, suicide. 
So I didn't listen, verse 13, I did not listen to the voice of my teachers or incline my ear to my instructors. The Lord's saying, look, you just didn't obey. You, you didn't bend your ear when I was having this conversation with you. And verse 14, I'm at the brink of utter ruin in the assembled congregation. I'm just moments away from all hell breaking loose. All evil, all calamity, everything is getting ready to be taken away. My private life now has public consequences. Those masks that you guys are filling out right now, I had so many of them on. And the reason I had those masks on was because I had to have somebody like me. I had to have a woman like me. If a woman didn't like me, man, it was, it was like, that was my shame story. And here's the thing. The very thing that I was doing to get a woman to like me, if she did like me, the love of her was going to my mask. It wasn't even going to me. It's an endless spiral. You guys get that? So this mask concept, that Kevin, it's a great exercise because what I learned is that, man, I, it's not just one. <laughs> they, just, they just keep coming off. Your private life now has public consequences. You know, we've been wearing the mask. We've been living a facade. All of those men's groups that you, you go to and, and you don't talk. Because you're just too scared or you're too proud. All of that stuff starts to come to light in the congregation. Whether you like it or not, your private life will be found out. Verse 16. I'm sorry, verse 15. Drink water from your own cistern, flowing water from your own well. The Lord's saying here that, that your, your wife is like a spring of pure water. Drink from that spring. Calm your desire with the water that flows from your own well. So in other words, just as you get a drink from your own faucet in your own home, have your sexual desires met by that same wife living inside that home. Verse 16, should your springs be scattered abroad? Streams of water in the streets? Why should a man's desire be toward anyone else out in the public streets. So in today's vernacular, it would be something like, hmm, son, why are you involved in pornography? Why are you flirting with the waitress? What are you doing on Match.com? Why do you have a secret P.O. box? What about those secret email addresses? What about the secret tablet or the phone that's only used for sin? What, what, what about those things? Verse 17, let them be for yourself alone and not for strangers with you. A man should never be willing to share his wife with another man. Why? Verse 18, let, let your fountain be blessed. And rejoice in the wife of your youth. See, there's some divine favor there. Be blessed. Be blessed. Enjoy this moment with your wife. Enjoy it. Be present with her. I know that's hard to do. I know you've got things on your mind. I know you're trying to provide. I know you're scared. I get it. But the Lord's saying... Take a breath and be present with your wife. Why, do, why does the Lord want us to be present? Verse 19, because she's a lovely deer. She's a graceful doe. Let her breast fill you at all times with delight and be intoxicated with her love. Let her body satisfy your sexual needs. Why wouldn't it? Why would not our wives' body 
fulfill, fulfill our sexual needs. Most of the time it's because of pornography or my eyes wandering. Because when I'm looking at another woman, when I'm watching people have sex, I'm comparing her to her. And those actors are going to look different than your real wife, right? Let her body make you happy to be fully satisfied. Be intoxicated. The Lord's like, I want you to be staggering to, to, to go have sex with your wife, and I want you to enjoy it. And when you walk away, I want you staggering even more. I want you to be intoxicated with her love. Because, guys, sex is not about sex. If we think sex is simply about this physical relationship that we have with, with other people, we are so missing it. We have, we have no idea that this relationship between husband and spouse reflects the beauty and the glory of Almighty God as Jesus Christ as the husband and we as the bride. He is the King of kings, He is the Lord of lords, but He is also the groom of all grooms. And the, the reality is, you know what, if, if I've got problems at home and my sex life is not good, where does that fall? It falls with me, the guy in the mirror. Sex is not about sex. From a worldly perspective, Sex is about power, it's about abuse, it's about demeaning women. And pornography certainly shows us that. 50% of internet porn contains some type of violence, some type of abuse towards women. But see, from a biblical perspective, sex is the physical manifestation of a spiritual reality. And one question I like to ask when I speak is, what is sex? I usually get a couple giggles and laughs and snickers from the audience, and they're thinking, oh my gosh, this guy's going to teach us about sex, and he doesn't even know what it is. So let me ask it another way. Why does God use marriage as an analogy to illustrate his relationship to us? Why marriage? Why the most deep and intimate and personal relationship? From Genesis to Revelation, we read about God weaving this theme of marriage in and out all the way through. Why? Well, marriage is a symbol. It's a symbol of the commitment that he has to you. He's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. And I pray that you would ask the Lord to reveal this amazing truth to you as you read Scripture and you walk with him today. And if you, speaking of pornography, if you are in that struggle, I want to mention this new audio series and this, this workbook that is now available. It's called The Sex Spiral, and it addresses pornography. It addresses um, the recovery aspect of sexual sin. So I want to encourage you to, uh, to take a look at it on the website. Go to DustinDaniels.org, click on Store. And look, here's the deal. Maybe you can't stop looking at pornography and you don't know why. Maybe you've tried. Maybe you can't stop masturbating. Those, those two things are two sides of the same coin as well. Or maybe you find yourself just thinking about, you know what? This is boring now. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to heighten the experience. I'm going to go into a strip club. I'm going to hire a prostitute. I'm going to commit adultery. And those are all very, very bad ideas, by the way. You know, I've never had anyone come into my office and say, you know what, Dustin? Committing adultery is the best thing that's ever happened to me. It's the best thing that's ever happened in my life. No, 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 no. Unfortunately, we as men specifically, we have to experience a lot of this by ourselves. We've got to taste the pain before we realize how wretched and how broken we truly are. That's the bad news. But see, here's the good news. The good news is the gospel. And you don't have to stay where you are. See, Jesus Christ did not redeem your sin. 
just to save you. He, he came to set you free from this bondage as well. In fact, I would say that if, you've, if you have already accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, then you're already free. You just don't know it yet. So this audio series, this workbook, this devotional is something that you can do in 35 days. I designed this thing as an individual study. It's, a, it's the first step to, to um, engage in this new chapter of your life of, of wanting to be sexually pure and having sexual integrity and remaining sexually sober. I've, I've designed it to take away the embarrassment and the shame that it brings to, um, to ask right now to go into a, a counselor's office or a group or walk into a bookstore. So all I have to do is order it from the website. It comes to you. It's not packaged in any uh, specific way. So just think of it. In just over one month, you're going to learn God's design for sex, marriage, and the family. And you're also going to learn why you do what you do. You're going to learn the hidden triggers that lead to porn addiction. You're going to realize that you do these things that you aren't even aware of. It's like a big map. It says you're right here. And this is how you exit this thing called the sex spiral. And you're going to learn, you're going to begin to learn why you've got this propensity towards pornography. You're going to learn why your efforts have, have failed in the past to, to try and stop by yourself and how the only hope for freedom really from this evil sin and make no doubt about it, pornography is heinously evil, but the hope is found in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So long story short, it's basically 13 years worth of recovery wrapped up in 35 days. So I'd encourage you to order it today. Jump on DustinDaniels.org, click on store. You can type in the podcast inside that promotional code and you'll get a 20% discount as well. Well, thank you so much for listening to God, Sex, and You. I'm Dustin Daniels, and you can follow me on Twitter at Purity Pastor, and I'd love to hear from you. Email me your questions at DustinDaniels.org. And let's not forget what the Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 4.20. The kingdom of God isn't just a lot of talk. It's living, living in God's power. And that power, my friend, is the very name. It's the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And I pray that you cling to him today. I love you. I want you to walk worthy with him today. And I look forward to our time again tomorrow. Tomorrow.